Anatoly. Is the day spring? Well, good morning. In Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This is your official call to worship for this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we are going to be glad. Stand on your feet. Let's give God the praise and the honor and glory that is due his name as the praise team ushers us into the presence of almighty God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that you're our God and that you're loving The sins of the world. For the sins yeah. of the world. His blood breaks the chain. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will every bow. Every knee will bow before the lion and oh, the lamb. Every knee. Every knee will bow before him. Yes, church. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ, He is the Lord. Amen. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God. Our God is the Lion. The Lion, the lion is the truth. He is roaring. Yeah. 
worthy to be praised. His name is great, and we've come to bless him. Hallelujah. I believe that it's my season. That it's my season. And I believe. And I believe that it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. Send breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. It's yours if you want it. Anticipating. Anticipating. That God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. For I know, for I know, my God, my God He's working His work a miracle, a miracle, just for me, just for me, and it's gonna be, and it's gonna be. What a powerful time of worship that the praise team has led us into the presence of God. Just got a couple quick announcements for you this week. A couple quick announcements. Number one, that this will be our last focal point for the year. Uh, December the 16th, this Wednesday, December the 16th will be our last focal point for the year. We'll take a couple weeks off because of the new year and because of the holiday season that's ahead of us. Amen. We will start back in 2021 and those dates will be coming to you. Also, we want to let you know that we have some new touch points that will be created for us so we can come together and that we can get some more touches on you during the week. We'll have classes on Sunday morning from 8.30 to 9.45. From 8.30 to 9.45, there are 75-minute classes designed for you to be able to get in God's Word for 75 minutes before worship starts at 10 o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock, our worship services will be started. We have Monday nights where we have marriage Mondays. Marriage Mondays where Monday night we focus strictly on our married couples. On Tuesday nights is our time that I set aside for my ministers and ministers in training that we pour into them. On Wednesday nights will be our focal point. That is our Bible study where we'll be able to get in the Word. And on Thursday, we'll have a, a plethora of classes for you on Thursday that you can participate in and that you can sign up for. We'll have some more names of those classes coming to you. On Friday night will be our women's discipleship. And on Saturday morning, brothers, we'll start our men's discipleship back up. All of those will be taking place in 2021. Some names of the classes and the way that you can register for the classes and to get your materials for the classes will be coming to you in the next couple of weeks so that you can take advantage 
of all these touch points that we're creating for you. Amen. It is now offering time. It's now offering time. Amen. 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 I love when we have an opportunity to give back to God what is rightfully is. Psalm 24, 1 says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verses six lets us know that if we sow sparingly, we'll reap sparingly. But if we sow bountifully, we will reap bountifully and that God loves a cheerful giver. So I don't want you to be grudgingly. I don't want you to give grudgingly. I want you to be happy. I want you to be excited. I want you to be jumping with joy that you have an opportunity to give back to God what is rightfully his. Amen. If you're guessing, you're watching online, we believe that this is good ground for you to sow into right now. So we want to give you an opportunity of sowing into this church. There are three ways in which you can sow. One is by what we call the snail mail. You can mail it to Day Spring Ministries at P.O. Box 550, P.O. Box 550, Middletown, Pennsylvania, 17057. That's P.O. Box 550. Middletown, Pennsylvania, 17057. Or you can go on our website. And as you go on our website, click on the, the button that is for giving and you can give there through our website. Or you can download the Dayspring app and you can give through the Dayspring app that way. So there are three ways in which you give. Through the snail mail, through our website, and through our app. And we want to give you an opportunity to give to us. We believe this is good ground. We're praying that as you're being generous towards us, we're praying God will pour out a blessing on you. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold as the word promises promises that God will do. And so we want to give you an opportunity to give. Let's pray over this offering before we give. But before we pray, I want to make sure that you take note that you honor Dr. Ash with a pastoral love offering. Make sure that you're being a blessing towards the man of God for 20, 29 years of faithful service, 29 years of preaching, teaching, loving, counseling, and being here for this church and for others in the community. So we want to make sure that you honor him with a pastoral love offering. Be generous towards him as he's coming to the end of his 29 year period. Make sure that you are generous towards the man of God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you what is right for yours. We ask you now to bless the tithes and the offering for the furtherance of the gospel in the city, in the state, and throughout the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are y'all ready for the word? I ask you, are you ready for the word? I pray that you are ready for the word. I want you just to take a moment, and if you have your Bibles today, turn to Job chapter 2. Job chapter two, and we're going to be preaching from there this morning. We're going to do part two of last week's message, Life's Unexpected Turns, when life takes an unexpected turn. We'll be doing that and from Job chapter two, and now get ready for the music ministry of Dayspring as they usher us into the presence of Almighty God. Merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and Friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You are the hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost our way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost our way. God tells us that if we seek him 
that we shall find him if we seek him with our whole heart. We will find that loving savior. We will find the comforting spirit. And we will find our almighty father. But the question is, are our hearts hungry enough to seek him, to truly seek him with all of who we are? Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. Wow, what a powerful time of worship. Are you ready for the word? I, I know last week that some of us were stunned by the word that we got last week with life's unexpected turns. I want to give you part two of that message today in Job chapter two, in Job chapter two. If you got your Bibles, just turn to Job chapter two. I just want to read a couple verses. We're going to look at 10 verses today. And out of this 10 verses, we're going to come out with a challenging message that will challenge us and provoke us and make us look at God differently after we see this message, after we receive this message. Job chapter two, starting at verse number one. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came and presented themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. And still he holds fast to his integrity. Although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. And so Satan said, answered, answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yes, all that the man has, he will give you his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bones and his flesh. And he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. Behold, he's in your hand, but spare his life. I want to preach from part two of the message of life's unexpected turns. Life's unexpected turns, the health crises. Life's unexpected turns, the health crises. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Now, God, I ask you to do only what you're able to do. Take these next few moments, breathe on them with your Holy Spirit. Allow the letters of the page to come off. Allow the Logos to become Rhema in our lives. Allow us to see you through your word. 
that is being preached on today. God, draw the unsaved, reclaim the backslider, and give assurance to those who are in doubt. Now, God, use your servant. Allow me to decrease and allow your Holy Spirit to increase and use me for your glory. Draw, heal, deliver, set free, open eyes, unmute ears, loose tongues, and that we may give you the honor and glory that is due unto you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, uh, life's unexpected turns. Uh, last week we dealt with Job 1 when life just goes left on you, when, when, the, when, when all of a sudden there's a hard left that's made, there's a hard turn that's made and life takes a hard turn on you and now you're holding on for dear life because you don't know what is coming next. I'm, I'm here in chapter two and I want to deal with chapter two, but I want to talk about life unexpected turns when there is a a health crisis, when there is a health crisis that is taking place. It is life unexpected turn. I I want to I want to go back to a painful moment and I want to allow you to look in on this painful moment that I experienced in my life. I, I've been through this painful moment, not once, but I've been through this painful moment two times. Two times that I sat there and I heard the doctors give a prognosis on each one of our parents that they were going to die. I heard the prognosis. I, I'll never forget it that my, my dad, whose situation was even worse because he was unresponsive. And I sent the police to knock down the door and they came and they found him unconscious. And the ambulance came and picked him up and they took him to the hospital. And, 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 and the doctor said that he he won't survive. And they, they gave me an option of what I wanted to do. I, I, I remember that moment very well because I was in that Florida's hospital all by myself and nobody to turn to, nobody to lean on. And I had to make a tough decision that day. But I want to take you back just about five years ago. Uh, my mom's gone home and will be with the Lord. But we knew that something was going on with her because she was fatigued and her breathing was labored. And we took her into the doctor's office and we took her into the doctor's office. Uh, he read the results to us. He said, he said, uh, Miss Godlock, I, I hate to tell you, but you you got stage three. You got stage three breast cancer. And, and, and there's not a lot we can do, we, but we want to do surgery. And I told him, no, no, you're not going to do surgery. But I remember that he said, well, it's nothing that we can do but make you comfortable for this point on. For the cancer has now metastasized inside of your body. And Ms. Godlock, there's nothing we could do. And I need to let you know, it, it, it was just a punch in my gut. And I'm sitting in his doctor's office and I'm watching his mouth move. I'm watching him give me the prognosis on my mother. I'm watching him give me the diagnosis. And I'm realizing that there's just a matter of time before she's going to be gone. And I just fell back in the chair and I just looked at him. And I was looking at him and I was mystified by why, what he was saying. But I had to snap out of it. And I realized right then and there that this woman who had been here all my life because she gave me life is now about to be gone. And life is now about to take an unexpected turn. Maybe you're watching today and you got a prognosis from a doctor or you heard something from a lawyer or you heard something from a judge or something in your life came to you and it just smacked you. And all of a sudden life just took a hard turn on you and you realize that day when that event happened that you would never, ever be the same because life has unexpected turns. I know that I'm talking to you this morning and I know that some of you are thinking back to those moments and no matter how painful they are, we cannot forget them. No matter how painful we are, we cannot change the thoughts that are in our mind. I can picture myself in that doctor's office right now and him saying that same thing to my mother over and over again. And I realized that I had been scarred for life by the words in which he spoke. Here in Job chapter two, I want to exegete the text. Exegete check means I want to pull some things from the text and I want to show you some things from the text. And as I'm showing you some things from the text, I want to strongly encourage you to realize 
that life will take an unexpected turn at one time or another. Or you might be under the attack of the enemy at one time. Or you might be in the midst of a trial at this very moment. Or you might be in a storm right now. But I need to let you know, instead of you blaming the devil, instead of you complaining about what the devil is doing to you, I want you to stop. I want you to pause. And I want you to realize that God is in control. Pastor God, like, what are you saying to us? I want to walk down this text and it's, it's eerily similar to chapter number one. It's eerily similar to the conversation that took place already in chapter number one. And now we're in chapter two. And now I'm, the same story is somewhat taking place, but in a sense is more intensified now. Let's go to text. Verse number one, it says, and again, there was a day. Didn't say it was the next day, but they said there was a day when the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord. And Satan came amongst them and presented himself before the Lord. And, and that's why I want to stop at right there, because it's another day, but it's the same conversation that's taking place. It's the same conversation that took place over in chapter one. But now we're over here in chapter two, and it's the same conversation that's taking place. You know that conversation that we talked about? We had God, we had the sons of God, and we had Satan. We had God, we had the sons of God, and we had Satan. Now we have these three individuals or these three groups of people that are now together and they're now having dialogue and they're now having conversation. And I know he's like you, like or if you're anything like me, it's baffling to me that I see God and the sons of God talking. I, I, I expect that. But when I see Satan present, that when God is having a conversation with the sons of God, that Satan is present there. I need to let you know that that baffles me and that makes me think like, God, hey, what is going on? But I realize that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. I realize that whether it's dominions or powers or principalities or thrones or whatever the case may be they are all subject to the Lord God and I realize that God uses everything for his glory so now we're having a conversation of three people three groups of people God the father the sons of God and Satan and they're having a conversation just like they did in chapter one but now it's chapter two they had a conversation about you in chapter one and now they're going to have a conversation again about you in chapter two. I want somebody to know today that God is no respecter of person. If Job had these storms, if David had storms, if Elijah had storms, if Jesus had storms, guess what? And you will have storms also. There's a conversation that's taking place. It, it, it baffles me. It baffles me because in chapter one, God offers Job up. And God offers Job up and, and, and Job passes the test in chapter one. So now we come back to chapter two and I, and I see that it's another day, but I see also that Job might be grieving. But Job now has to pass another test. And that's the question I want to ask somebody today. Are you complaining? Are you murmuring? Are you crying? Are you asking God, why me? Why am I going through this again? Or are you taking a point or emphasis on realizing what God is saying to you and realizing what God is saying to you, that there's something that he's working out in you. There's something that he's trying to get in you. There's something he's trying to birth in you. There's something he's trying to take out of you. God's, God's mathematics do not work the same way our mathematics work. Plus one plus one plus one equals two in our mathematics. But in God's mathematics, he may take a negative of something and a positive of something and he puts them inside of us. God is the only one that can take something from us while at the same time he's adding something to us in order to get the results that he wants out of. God often takes pride away from us, but at the same time he's putting humility in us so that God can get the glory in Sometimes God will take stubborn out of us and make us learn how to yield towards him. I need to let you understand something that God will take from you while at the same time he's adding something to you. Here's the text. In chapter one, God offers Job up. Now we're here in chapter two and God does the same thing that he did in chapter one. Look at verse number three. And then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That there's none like him on the earth. A blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. 
and shuns evil, and he will still hold fast to his integrity, although he be, you incite me against him to destroy him without cause. Here it is. God comes back to, to, to Satan again and said, look, you tried before and he didn't curse my faith. You tried before and when, when you touched his possessions. But now, Satan, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to allow you to touch his possessions. Now I'm going to allow you to touch his person. Woo. Okay. Okay. You can you can take the stuff. But you can't take him. You can touch the stuff and take it away. But now I'm going to allow you to touch his person. Only thing I'm going to ask you to do is make sure you don't take his life. Y'all, that's it. That's that's heavy today. That's heavy today because now what I see in this text is this, is that God has limits on where how far Satan can go. But at the same time, what God does is God takes it to another level in a sense. God raises the stakes. Look at verse number four. And so Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yes, all that the man has will he give his life for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bones and his flesh. And he will surely curse you and to your face. Look, 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 look what Satan is saying. Look, look. OK, he didn't flick off about the stuff. But now I want to touch his person. His possessions are gone and he didn't curse you. He, he gave you praise. He gave you honor. Okay, okay. But now I want to touch his person. Now I want to put on him disease. Now I want to put on him sickness. Now I want to put on him infirmities on side of it. Now I want to put some stuff on him that he needs a healing. And I want to let you know today that sometimes when you're going through life challenges, when you're going through life storms, the, the enemy will put cancer in you. The enemy will put dialysis situations on you. The enemy will give you your heart issue, no matter what you're going through, God will allow the enemy to touch your flesh, but he will not allow the enemy to take your life. The stakes are raised. The stakes are now raised because now Satan has been granted permission, granted permission to touch Job's flesh, but not to take Job's life. He took Job's possessions. But he could not take Job's loyalty to God. Job was loyal to God and he would not curse God. He would not lie against God. He would not shake his fist at God. But what Job would do is would give God the praise. And that's the question that we got to keep asking ourselves is that when life takes unexpected turns, when we're in the midst of a health crisis, when we've got the diagnosis from the doctor that is cancer or something that's incurable, will you curse God's faith or will you give God the glory? The stakes are raised. Verse number six, the limits are lifted and the attack intensifies. And so the Lord said to Satan, behold, he's in your hand, but spare his life. He takes the limits off. He had a hedge of protection around Job in chapter one that nothing could come near Job. And it could only be the stuff that's on the outside. But now God lifts up the hedge of protection that he has around Job. He lifts the limits of Job. And now the attack intensifies. And I want to let somebody know right now that you're in the midst of an intense attack. You're in the midst of an intense attack on your flesh, on your health, on the diseases on you or disease is in you. And you're going through a crisis right now. And I want to stop you and I want you to pause real quickly. And I don't want you to get mad at God. I don't want you to curse the face of God. But I want you to be able to give him the honor. I want you to be able to give him the glory in spite of what the doctors say. Can you give God the glory and the praise that is due his name? Limits are lifted. The attack intensifies. Here in verse number seven. So the Lord went out from the, for, so Satan, I'm sorry, so Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. Pause real quickly. That's what the old folks got it that you ask God to bless you from the crown of your head. 
to the soles of your feet. Right here in Job chapter 1, that Job had boils from the crown of his head all the way to the soles of the feet. So that's why the old folks say, God, I don't want you to touch me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. That's right there in the text. If you didn't know that, that's where the old folks got it from right there. So now Job has these boils that are all over his body. These boils that are all over his body and, and, and it's a physical condition that is very painful that you got little bumps all over your body from the crown of your head all the way from your scalp all the way down to the bottom of your feet you've got these boils that are all over you and it's, it's a physically it's a, a very painful disease that pus is inside of all of these little boils that are all over your back over your body it's painful you you can't lay down because guess what there are boils there you can't stand up guess what because there are boils there so you're uncomfortable in this situation you're uncomfortable in this situation and I need to let you know that sometimes with sickness and things that come upon you they mess with your head but they also mess with your walk Woo! I just said something there right there that, that, that the boils were on his head and it messed with his head but it also the boils were on his feet and it messed with his feet so he could not walk and sometimes when life he has unexpected turns. When we take a hard turn to the right or we take a hard turn to the left, it messes with our head and it affects the way that we walk. That sometimes that when sickness comes, people walk away from God. Sometimes people, when sickness comes, people have bad thoughts about God and the situation that they're under. And I want to speak to somebody today, even though it's physical, even though it's painful, whatever you do, I know it might be messing with your head and I know that your walk might be strained because of what is taking place. But what I want to let you know that whatever you do, don't give up in the midst of what you're going through. His boy was all over him. Oh, God. I can only imagine how Job was feeling. I can't sit down because I got boils on my back. I got boils on my butt. I got boils on my legs. I got boils on my feet. I got boils. I can't stand up. I can't sit down. I can't do anything. And this, this pain that's on me, this pain that I'm going through, and I want to know, God, when will this pain end? How long will this storm last? How long will I have to go through this? Verse 8. Job began to take things in his own hands. He took for himself pot shears with which he scraped himself while he sat in the midst of ashes. That lets us know that Job was still grieving the loss of his kids because he was in the midst of ashes. Ashes is a sign that we use for when we grieve in the Old Testament that they would tear their clothes, that they would shave their hair and that they would put sackcloth and ashes on them. So Job is still grieving because Job is still sitting in the ashes that are there from which he was grieving about his children. But now the boils have come and Job now takes up pot shears and he begins to scrape himself. Pot shears are pieces of clay pots that have been broken off and they now he begins to scrape the broils all over his body. The process is painstaking as he's popping one boil after another boil. Pus is coming out of him, blood is coming out of him, and he starts to deal with them because he realizes that the only way that the pain will stop is that the boils be bursted. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to let you know that sometimes you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. But whatever you do, don't manipulate the process. Allow the process to be the process. But Job takes the pot shears and he starts to scrape all over his body. So now can you imagine how he looks? He has to be disfigured by what he looks. He has to have pus and blood all over his body. He has to be to a place where he's not recognizable by the people that are around him because he scraped his head. He scraped his face. He scraped his chest. He scraped his arms, both of them. He scraped his legs, his back, his butt. Everywhere that he could get that pot shear to bust the boils that were on his body, he scraped them. It was a painful process I need to let you know that sometimes in this walk, everything will not be peaches. Everything will not be cream. Sometimes life will hurt you. Sometimes church folks will hurt you. Sometimes family folks will hurt you. Sometimes your friends will hurt you. Sometimes situations will hurt you. And it can be painful in life's unexpected turns. 
I want to speak to somebody here right now because you're watching me right now and you're in a painful moment right now. You got tears welled up in your eyes right now. You're thinking about what they said or what they did or how they treated you or how they lied. And I want to speak to you today to realize this, that God, if you pass the test, that there's another level. And I guess what? Everybody does not pass the test to get to the next level. But whatever you do, make sure you pass the test because if you don't, you got to repeat the test again. It's part of the process. It, 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 it's, it's painful, but it's also part of the process. Verse number nine, I wanted you to stop real quickly because you got to be worried about sometimes the folks that are closest to you. Verse number nine, it says, then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Do you still hold fast, Job, to who you are? Job, is you still hold fast? Curse God and die. Curse God and die. Now, now, now I know that she was bitter. I know that she was bitter because the 10 ch children that she bore are now gone. The seven sons and three daughters are now gone. The, the, the wealth that they had of all the donkeys and the camels and oxen were now gone. I know that she is feeling bad right now because now her man has boils all over her body and he now has scraped them all. So he's bleeding, pus is all over the top of him right now. And she, she can't even recognize the man that she had in her life. And now she turns around to Job and she tells Job to curse God and die. Ladies and gentlemen, that is when your helpmate becomes your hurtmate. That's when your helpmate becomes your hurtmate. Because now the counsel that she's given you is that you've lost everything. You've lost everything, but you have not lost your life. And you have not lost your wife. But now your wife is telling you to curse God and to die. And I need to speak to somebody in here today that that's all the enemy is trying to get you to do is put doubt in your faith, to doubt God, to not believe that God's a deliverer, not to believe that God is a healer, not to believe that God will make a way out of nowhere, to not to believe God and to not to put your trust in him and to walk away from him in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your tribulations and in the midst of your storms. Whatever you do, don't walk away from him and that whatever you do, do you not curse God. Do not talk against the Holy One of Israel. Do not curse the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and last. Whatever you do, don't open up your mouth and question him. Because your helpmate can become your hurtmate because she's bitter because she's lost her babies. She's bitter because she's lost all the possessions. She's bitter because a man is in pain. She's bitter because guess what? The boils that are on him. She's bitter because he's now disfigured because he scraped the boils and she's had enough. She said, look, just curse God and die so that God can take you out of here and take me out of here and put us both out of our misery. But in verse number 10, Job's response blows my mind. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women. He said, look, girl, you, you're talking like you're stupid. You're talking like you're back on the block somewhere. You're talking like you done lost your mind. You can't, you, 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 you're speaking like a fool right now. I need to let you know that a fool is known by as many words. And what you're speaking right now is sheer foolishness to me. Curse God and die? Are you mad? Have you lost your mind? And then here's what Job says. Shall I indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? Shall I indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? Let me come out. Let me break it down to you. Let me put it on 33 and third. Let me put it down. Let me slow it down and put it on the line of your mind. What Job is saying is God has blessed us with so much that with this little bit that we're experiencing, do I doubt him because I'm in a storm? Do I doubt him because I'm in a trial? Now, I did wake up this morning in my right mind, but, but because I had a trial, 
Now I got to curse them because I got storms. Now I got to doubt them because of the adversity. Now I got to walk away from them. And I want to let you know today that if you sit down and you think about it, whoo, if you sit down and you think about it, what the psalmist says is forget not the benefits of the Lord. Uh, Psalm 116 lets us know that there are benefits from the Lord. Psalm 34 lets us know that there are some benefits that come from the Lord. And the question is, this, if you sit down and you count the benefits, you count how many times you woke up every morning. You count how many times that you are in your right mind. You count how many times that there has been food on the table, that there's been clothes on your back, that there's been shelter over your head, that there's been shoes that are on your feet. When you begin to start to count the blessings, the blessings will outweigh the adversity and some. And I want to speak to somebody here today that don't base your current situation off or your whole life. Realize that your whole life outweighs the adversity that you're spending and that you're going through right now. And Job says, hey, all the things that God has done for me, what, why, why, why am I going to curse him because of some adversity? I told you already in chapter one that the Lord gave and the Lord take it away and blessed be the name of the Lord. So guess what I can't do? I'm not going to curse him now. And at the end of chapter 10, in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Didn't say what Job was thinking on the inside. But what it said was this, is that Job was saying, regardless of what has happened out here, I'm not going to talk against my Lord. I'm not going to talk against my Savior. I'm not going to talk against my deliverer. I'm not going to talk against my healer. I'm not going to talk against the provider. I'm not going to talk against my banner. I'm not going to talk against the source and the strength of my lives. He says that whatever I am going to do, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us Exalt his name together. Let me say it again. I will bless the Lord when at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So can we only give him praise in the good times? But can we give him praise in the midst of the bad. When you have life's unexpected turns, when you get the diagnosis from the doctor and things go left on you, remember, you still give them the praise. When they say there's nothing more that they, they can do, guess what? You still give them the praise. Do you know how many people are on the earth that are alive today because the doctor said we, there's no more we can do for you? I was looking at a story the other day that a lady, if four years earlier, they say there's nothing you can do. You got a matter of weeks before you die. And it's four years later and she's feeling fine and the doctors are baffled. I need to let you know that our God is in the miracle business. Our God is still in the healing business. Our God is still in the deliverance business. Our God is still in the providing business. Our God will still make a way out of no way. He'll still be that bridge over troubled waters. He'll still be peace in the midst of the storm. He'll still be joy in the times of sorrow. He'll still be up when you are down. He'll still be strong when you are weak. That whatever you do, don't allow your circumstances to change your perspective of your God. Let's pray. <coughs> Father, we ask you now that you take these few moments and let your word just permeate our hearts. When we have those health challenges, God, that we need to look to you. That the doctors can give their prognosis. But God, you have the last word. I thank you that you have the last word, that you have the last say so. Now, God, I pray now for somebody that might be sick, somebody that might have a terminal illness, somebody that might be in doubt of what the doctors said and they're ready to give up. I pray now that you would take these next few moments, increase their faith, 
Let them take their eyes off of their problems and let them glare and gaze at you in all the splendor and beauty in which you possess. Now, God, do what only you're able to do. Heal the brokenhearted. Restore faith to those who have lost it. Balance those who are double minded and give them one thought in their mind. And God, turn our hearts towards you. It's in Jesus name. Amen. If you're watching today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, I want to give you an opportunity to accept him today. You're about 30 seconds away from making the greatest decision where you surrender to the Lord Jesus. He's no respect to a person. If he saved me, he can save you. Here's what I want to challenge you to do on tonight. There's a number, there's an email address at the bottom of the screen, info at dsm.church, info at dsm.church. If you email us there, we got counselors now that are waiting for you to, to email us there, and they're going to hit you back, and they're going to start an email chain with you and try to get to talk to you face-to-face -face and walk you through the salvation road that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Maybe you're watching today and you might be in a backslidden situation. You had a health crisis and you prayed to God and God did not do what you wanted him to do. But I need to let you know that that means he, he does not love you. He still loves you. He still cares about you. But you didn't get the results that you thought that you wanted from God. I need to let you know that God makes no mistakes in what he's doing. I want to challenge you today that you might need to make up with God and might need to return to him and ask him to forgive you for your because your heart has been hard towards him. And you might need to rededicate your life. There's an email address at that bottom of the screen. Email us there and we'll talk with you and we'll pray with you and make sure you get reconnected with God. Or maybe you've been watching this over the past couple of weeks and you want to become a virtual member of Dayspring. In this season, we not, can't take anybody in physically, but we can take you in virtually. And if you want to become a virtual member of Dayspring, email us at that email address and we'll have counselors get back with you and that you can join us on that day, on the day. If you desire for the counselor here. So if you're watching this anytime during the week and you're watching this service, whatever you do right there, let the counselors talk to you and walk with you on the next step that you're going through. You might be in the midst of a health crisis right now and you might just need some prayer. We're here for you. We got counselors waiting for you. Info at dsm.church. Info at dsm.church and our counselors are ready to pray with you. Amen. We pray God's richest blessings over you, that he would give you a traveling grace down the highways and byways, that he would encamp his angels of mercy beside you to guide you and to provide for you and let no hurt, harm, or danger come to you. We'll see you on Wednesday night, Focal Point, and guess what? I'll see you next week right here in the sanctuary with a word for you in the, for the season of Advent. Amen. God bless you.